food is very, very important if you want to perform at the highest level, if you want to be more successful, because it is the energy that you put into your body, your machine, and that can have very different effects on how well that machine runs. For the most part, most people don't care about food. If you look at people on the street, if you go to any tourist destination, from 10 years of age all the way to 70 or 80 years of age, most people, they just eat whatever they want, whatever they see. And I used to do this. I loved fast food. And I was someone who could eat a lot without gaining much weight. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess you could say, I learned the value of good food and high energy and peak performance and all that stuff. And I realized the effect it had on my body. So food is very important. And therefore, for the last year, I've had this belief that maybe, just maybe, I can make food. That there is food and recipes out there that are cheap and affordable, that are great tasting, that are simple to make, and that anyone can do. Now, that's a tough, tough thing to do because most of the time, one of those things are missing. And usually it's not healthy. But what if all of those things were possible? Now, I would like to think that most things that you think are impossible are usually possible because guess what? Like if someone can get a man to the moon, if they can create all sorts of crazy technology, let us fly in airplanes, move at 60 miles per hour on a car, then we can probably put our heads together and make a recipe that is, you know, cheap, healthy, affordable, and simple to make. But unfortunately, there's so many mental blocks in my head and in other people's heads. So this is our journey together to solve those blocks and find if this is possible. Now, I definitely think it's possible. There's so many, you know, food scientists out there and, you know, really intricate, complex gourmet chefs. But again, it's not rocket science. So I just did a lot of research and I found that this is definitely possible. There are videos out there of people making really cool food in, you know, a very cheap budget. There's this video called How I Thrived on $3 a Day. And he made like almost gourmet style food that was really, really good looking, at least from what I saw in the video and probably tasted great from a very affordable budget. Now, usually it's always some problem when I did my research. It was something like, oh, it wasn't that easy to make. Most of the time, there would be like 10 different spices or seasonings that you had to use. What's the point then when there's like so many seasonings? You're probably blowing all your money on all these seasonings and they confuse you and all that stuff. For you know, someone who's very successful, they realize that they have to deal with something called limited willpower. And some people say that this is why a lot of the top CEOs like Mark Zuckerberg and Steve Jobs never wore fancy clothing. They always wore the same shirt or the same hoodie. I like to think that's possible, but more than likely they just didn't care about fashion. However, I do think that they realized that on some level that they had a limited amount of willpower every day, as studies show, and decision fatigue and the amount of decisions a person can make in a day is limited. So they wanted to limit anything that got too complicated in their lives so they could focus on their business. And I mean, it's, it's very true. So without further ado, let's get started. I have done my research and I want to start at the top. Meat is very important to me. I'm trying to stay away from it or at least find protein substitutes because excessive meat eating is not how we were uh, raised genetically. However, I love my meat. I love eating meat. I can't really go a day without eating at least some type of meat. So we're going to start there and we will be making healthy fried chicken. I love fried chicken, but I wanted to see if I can make it healthy. So I found a lot of recipes online, watched a lot of videos, and I managed to create and simplify my own recipe that's very healthy. It's very affordable. It's very simple to make. And honestly, I wish I had some better ingredients, but I used a few substitutes that I had lying around, which is a great illustration and example that, hey, if you don't have the best foods or the, all the ingredients there, you can innovate and you can use a substitute. So 
It's five ingredients. It's that simple. First, we have chives. Now, I wish I could use parsley or something else, but chives is the probably you know next best thing. Uh, parsley is a huge one, so if you have parsley, that's probably better. But I don't, so you know I'm gonna have to do with chives. Next thing is obviously raw meat. I got uh, boneless chicken thighs. I think boneless chicken breasts do just as well. Peppers. So these are just like bell peppers and they come in different colors. Um, we'll just need like half of one pepper for this recipe. Eggs. And the last ingredient is flour. Flour is also one of those that I uh, am using as a substitute. Preferably, I wish I had breadcrumbs, panko breadcrumbs, or cornmeal, or something else, but I got flour. So that, that's, those are the five things plus the chicken. It's very simple, and it's my simplified recipe from all the things I did research on. Now, if you want to be extra healthy, uh, I found these alternatives. Uh, you don't have to, though. One is something called... Uh, whole wheat flour rather than regular flour. It looks pretty much the same. Um, and then another is oat fiber. And it's basically like a powdery substance made from oats. And it's not really healthy, but it's not really unhealthy. It's a neutral ingredient, kind of like water. So it's zero uh, on a lot of things, zero fat, zero calories, zero carbs, zero whatever. And I, from my past experience, and what I've been told is that, you know, if you use these substitutes, they barely taste any different. And this is generally true. And if there is a difference, you get used to it quickly. It's no big deal. And again, trust me, I'm a really picky eater. So again, I'm going to try out all those different flowers, but you can just stick to one. I did a lot of research and it just seems like the difference is negligible anyway, so who cares? But there you go. If you want to, go ahead, check it out. So I've also done a bit of research, quite a bit, and there's all sorts of debates on the difference between an organic free-range egg and then just like your normal stock egg that you get at your local supermarket versus using egg whites. And there's all sorts of debates and myths out there. I would say the big things I want to emphasize is that uh, people think that egg whites are like super healthy and you remove a lot of the cholesterol and all the fatty stuff from the yolk of the egg and therefore egg whites are the way to go and sure you can definitely use egg whites instead of actual eggs in this recipe but from my research I found that that's not exactly the case the yolk of the egg is where you're going to get all sorts of nutrients sure there's fat and cholesterol in there but there's also a lot of other great stuff in there that's essential for your well-being. Now, as far as organic versus, you know, normal eggs, I definitely pr prefer organic. And apparently it's a lot healthier. And then there's a lot of debate and controversy over which ones are actually healthier. If they're actually healthier from the research I've done, it seems like organic is a lot, lot healthier and a lot better on a lot of levels and super really good for you. But again, surprisingly, there's a lot of contradictory evidence saying that there's no difference whatsoever. So if it gets to a point where there's that big of an argument, I'm just going to leave it be and let you guys do the research on your own. So this video is getting kind of long. I'm going to cut it here. And in my next video, we will be getting into the actual cooking of this fried chicken recipe. I'm excited. Are you excited? See you later. Welcome guys to the next part of the healthy fried chicken recipe. So in video one, I went through the simple ingredients, why I'm doing this and the objective of this whole experiment. In this video, I will be starting to cook. So we have the chicken right here and we also have the oven set to 350 degrees to preheat. Now, what you wanna do is 
smush the chicken and the uh, objective is to make it thinner it's it's called tenderizing and usually um, you do it with like a hammer and you put it in between a plastic bag but if you don't have that which I don't I'm just gonna like smush it a bit and the second thing you want to do is poke holes in it and the idea behind this is uh, by poking holes you get more uh, air flowing through it and more surface area so that when you put in the spices later that will add to much more flavor and much more uh, impact now now again spices are optional i will not be using many spices other than the uh, natural peppers i mentioned and maybe a bit of garlic if you don't have garlic you can use garlic powder and if you don't have any of those like there's a million different spices that you might have lying around that might work chipotle chili powder is one that's recommended um, cumin uh, there's all sorts out there now to cut up the chives 